Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's video. I'm sitting here at the Williamson Art Guild Art Gallery. I'm doing my monthly shift because I'm a member here, and it got me thinking about art. So during this video, we're going to talk a little bit about what makes photography fine art and what makes it good fine art. So stay tuned. <laughs> just got back from Wyoming leading a couple of workshops for Wild Side Nature Tours, um, a Grand Teton workshop and a Yellowstone workshop. Now I have di different clients on each of the tours, but I got asked the same question on both tours, which I found was very, very interesting because I don't know if I've ever been asked this question before. And the question is, what makes a photograph fine art? So if you read my bio, you'll see that I list myself as a fine art nature and wildlife photographer and not everybody knows what, exactly what that means so I did pull up the definition of what fine art photography is and I'm gonna read it for you here so fine art photography is photography created in line with the vision of the photographer as an artist using photography as a medium for creative expression the goal of fine art photography is to express an idea a message or an emotion. So that is the actual definition. And really what makes it different than other photography might be um, photojournalism or documentation um, being something that they are trying to show exactly what's happening, whereas art could be more of expressing, like they said, a message, emotion. Now, that's the actual definition, but it's not the definition that I gave those clients because I didn't have that definition in front of me at the time. And I do want to say exactly what I told them. And to me, fine art photography is intention. What was your intention in taking the picture? Art is objective, so there is no um, actual definition of this is art and this isn't art. It's all in the eye of the beholder. So if a photographer is taking the photograph with the intention of making it art, then it's art. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's good art or, ba or bad art. And what makes art good art and bad art also could be in the eye of the beholder. There are certain photographs that I certainly don't love and there are certain photographs that I absolutely adore. My house is full of fine art photography. A little bit of mine, but a lot of other people's as well. And what makes art um, you know good is whether or not it strikes emotion in the viewer so for me I want to see um, if it's wildlife photography I want to see I want to see the emotion in the animals eyes I want to see a moment captured in time this could be a mom and a baby this could be um, this could be a beautiful landscape this could be um, two siblings playing, whatever that is, it should drive emotion and make me feel something. Now, there's certain elements in art that help that. That could be composition, making sure that we're in the rule of thirds or that the animal is coming into the frame and not out of the frame. Of course, sometimes the best art is breaking those rules intentionally. But of course, the artist already knows that they're doing that and they're trying to get the viewer to stop and pause because they're not used to seeing those things and that's what sometimes breaking those rules can in fact do. Other things could be lighting. So if it's harsh light, that may not be what we consider good art. Really dramatic light, um, usually beginning of the day, end of the day, sometimes during storms that can make some really interesting lighting for landscapes. And um, subject matter. So like I said, something that's going to make you feel something. So what I don't like as far as art is art that depicts, depicts animals in a negative light. I want to see my art as positive things. I want to see happy moments, endearing moments, moment of triumph. I don't want to see the blood, the gore, death, things like that. 
not everybody feels that way. Sometimes seeing, um, there's a really great artist, uh, Morgan Heim, who has these beautiful portraits of these animals that have been struck by vehicles and she makes memorials for them. The pictures are beautiful and definitely an exception to that rule of showing death and imagery. But for the most part, I wanna see positive things. The things that I wanna hang in my house are moments of rebirth and positive images, portraits, beautiful landscapes. And um, that's what artists to me, it's, it's things that make me feel something. So that is the loose definition of what makes fine art, um, photography fine art, and a couple of artists that inspire me. I just wanna talk a little bit about that. So I started working for Thomas Mangelson right out of college and he's really the person who got me thinking about photography as art. I do have a art minor in photography, um, but it was his wildlife art that really inspired me to move in that direction as a fine art photographer. Um, his work is limited editions and that's how I've always done my work because I see them as valuable and I want to limit how many there are in the world, that there's just not an indefinite amount of pictures in the world of that. So limiting them. And then the way that they're displayed, that they're either framed or they're on metal or on canvas, and that they are printed on high quality paper and displayed in a professional manner, and that they always come with a certificate of authenticity so that you know that they're real, that the artist printed them, that they signed them, and that they're not just replications that were printed off the internet. So Thomas Mangelson, I mentioned Morgan Heim is another, um, she does a lot of photojournalism, but her, her work is done in a very beautiful fine art style, I, I like. Other photographers, um, of course, Ansel Adams, very famous um, for his work with national parks. And other artists like Jodi Cobb, she worked for National Geographic, again, another photojournalist whose work is beautifully done. Um, specifically, I'm thinking of her work with the geisha. Um, the lips of the, of the geisha, those red lips really speak to me. Um, yeah, and, and there's so many other amazing fine art photographers out there. There's also photographers that are in the nature genre, like Anne Getty, who did a lot of work with babies um, and, and various other, um, you know, photographers out there that have created incredible works of art. Um, I've also, pieces that I own in my house are a Steve Winter, his work with tigers. Um, I, I love his, his work on tigers. I love his, his picture with the Hollywood sign and the mountain lion. Uh, Nick Nichols is another picture I have in my house, and Susie Esterhaus, a picture of a cheetah running. Um, these are pictures that I, I hang on my wall proudly. And um, lastly, the photographer who got me started in the first place, I've never met him, but his work is proudly hung in my house, and that is of Chris Johns, who also worked for National Geographic and did a lot of pictures in Africa. So I'll put links to these people's work in the description here. And I invite you to add to my list who, um, whose work inspires you? What kind of photographs do you like to see hanging on your wall? And um, yeah, I hope this helps define fine art photography for you. And I will catch you next week when we are talking about something else. All right, if you are not a subscriber, please make sure you click the button, ring the bell so you get reminders that these videos are coming out and we'll catch you next week.